In this video, we're going to discuss how to navigate your calculus course. Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and Calculus 3 have been built on a similar platform, and navigating one course is much like navigating another. We'll see examples from all three courses on how to navigate. When you first log into your D2L course shell, you will see a pop-up window such as the one pictured here. This will introduce your professor and also tell you how to get started and what to do first. After you have read through the first page, click on the next link, which of course will take you to a video showing you how to navigate D2L. The next video is this particular video covering how to navigate the course material. You will have to be patient because it does sometimes take a little while for it to pop up. After you have watched this video and feel confident in how to navigate the course, go ahead and click on the last item, which has information about your instructor and what they will expect from you and how you can contact them. When you're done, you can click on Dismiss. When the welcome window closes, you will be on the home page for your course. You will have announcements here from your instructor and on this side, work to do. In general, the homeworks, quizzes, and exams have not been set up to show up in the work to do list but reflections, discussion boards, and Python projects will show up here. You will want to use the course schedule in order to stay on track, and we'll see that in just a moment. You can also find information about your particular instructor in the instructor information widget. Everything you need in the course for the most part is in the content section. When you click on content, you will be able to see the table of contents down the left menu. The first item is welcome to the calculus course, in this case, the calculus one course. This is where all of the items in the welcome widget pop-up window are listed. If you need information about your instructor, you can click on this and you'll be able to find instructor information here. Click on Start Here, Module 0. Start Here, Module 0 is essentially the syllabus for the course, though your instructor may make available an additional printable syllabus for students who need that information in order to transfer. Let's take a look briefly at the different items, and we'll take a more in-depth look at the ones that are most important to students. Let's use the Calculus 2 course as an example. All of these are listed in the order in which they're meant to be covered. Go ahead and click on Module 0 Introduction, which basically just tells you that this particular module is your course syllabus. In the next one, you have information about the course. This includes the course description, the number of credit hours, the prerequisite, and if your instructor has provided a print version of the syllabus, you will find it here. It also contains the information about the Guaranteed Transfer Pathways Program for Colorado State Colleges and Universities. Next, it covers all of the information in the course learning outcomes and the topical outline for that particular course. Either at the bottom or at the top of the page, you can click on the right arrow to go to the next item in the list. You will find course license and copyright information and the course mode of instruction, which in this case is online. This particular page has some items where you can check your system to be sure that it is adequate to run the My Courses D2L homepage and also to get help with D2L and figure out how to do various items within a D2L setting. You will also need a way to convert your handwritten work into a single PDF file. 
There is a link at the bottom of this page to a document which will explain in detail exactly how you can do that. The course materials page gives information about the textbook, which is also available in Spanish. There are also lecture notes for all of the calculus courses that are very detailed and in essence replace the textbook. They are based on the textbook and include some information from it, but are written more on a student level so that they are more easily accessible by students. You will need a calculator, a scientific calculator and a graphing utility. A graphing calculator will be used in some sections and can be used on exams. You don't need the latest model in order to be successful in the course. Any TI-83 or TI-84 model will work well, but you cannot use a computer algebra system such as a TI-89 or a TI-INSPIRE CAS. There is a TI-INSPIRE that is not a CAS system, and that one is acceptable. For most items in the course, a scientific calculator is sufficient. And the one that is recommended is the one that you see pictured here. It is relatively inexpensive and can be bought at many different locations. This course is the same regardless of the time period in which you are taking it. No assignments or different activities are cut depending on the duration of the course. On this page are the course learning outcomes mappings. These are the items coming from the state system that list the course learning outcomes. Each one is a drop down menu which lists the items under that topic and what modules they're covered within. We also have module learning objectives which are mapped to the course learning outcomes up above. This is the page that most students care the most about. Let's take a look at a Calculus 3 course. This covers all of the homework, quizzes, Python labs, discussion forums, reflections, exams, and final exam, as well as the grading scale that your instructor has chosen. Down below, you will see tabs that will open when clicked upon to give you more information about the homework or about how to organize your information into a notebook so that you can find your materials when ready to study for an exam, as well as how to write up homework problems so as to reduce the number of careless mistakes made. Using line notebook paper leads to 10% more careless mistakes than writing on blank printer paper. It is recommended that you start all problems on blank printer paper so as to reduce the number of careless mistakes. Information about quizzes, discussion forum, Python labs, reflections, and exams can be found here. If you have a learning difference, then you will want to read the section on accommodations. If you want to know how to post in a discussion forum, you will want to click here as it explains in detail exactly how to post. Be sure, for example, that you do not use Control or Command C and Control or Command V to paste an image into a discussion forum. It frequently breaks the link and your instructor will not be able to open it and read it. Instead, click on one of the two icons you see here with an arrow pointing to it, or you can use the equation editor in D2L. This video explains how to use the equation editor in D2L. On the next page, we have the basic structure of all of the sections that are covered in the course. It is suggested that you read the section introduction on each section page. Every section in the textbook has a web page within D2L. You will want to read the lecture notes. You may also wish to read the e-text, which is available for your textbook, but it is not required. 
You will want to watch the lecture video and complete the examples in the lecture notes as you follow along. This is the primary method to learn the content. There are optional additional videos that are shorter in length that may help you if you are still confused after watching the lecture videos. Many of the homework exercises also have optional attached videos which cover just that particular problem type. After watching the video and completing the lecture notes with the video examples, there are interactive applets for mathinsight.org, GeoGebra, Desmos, and CalcPlot3D provided for every section. These will help you better understand the content or test your understanding. Once you have completed this, you are ready to begin the homework. You may choose to work more problems out of the e-text, in which case I recommend you work the odd problems since you can find the answers to the odd problems by clicking on the number of the problem, which will open up the solution to that problem. There are discussion forums for every week of the course, but you are only required to post seven times during the semester. You can post more often if you like. You will want to post an image of your work with short descriptions to the right to explain your steps and thought process. You can either post a worked out solution to a problem you feel confident is correct, or to post the solution to a problem that you are not confident is correct or that you even know is incorrect and ask for help in finding the error. You can also respond to a classmate's posted question by thoroughly explaining how to fix the error or posting your own solution to their problem. Four times throughout the semester, you'll be asked to reflect on your learning. This is simply a matter of completing the assignment in order to get full points. There are no right or wrong answers. This is simply an opportunity to share how you are doing with your instructor. There are some review homeworks at the beginning of each course, which will cover prerequisite material that may help you. These are available throughout the course. There are additional websites and other sources of OER lecture notes that can be found by clicking on this link. You also have available to you TutorMe which provides online tutoring available 24 seven. Depending on the section, you may or may not have a quiz where you are asked to complete your work by uploading a PDF. Some quizzes require you to show your work, but most quizzes you do not show your work. All quizzes are computer graded, but the ones where you show your work may be adjusted by your instructor after looking at your work. There are exams and a final exam, which also require you to upload a PDF of your work. You will also complete one to two programming assignments throughout the course. But even if you've never programmed before, you should be able to handle this since the code is already written. You simply need to be able to copy it and alter it for new functions. This is a mastery-based assignment, and you can turn it in repeatedly until you receive the grade you desire up to the final submission date. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of actual pages so you can get a feel for what an actual page would look like. And then we'll return to start here, module zero. This is section 2.3 in the Calculus 3 with Engineering Applications course. This covers the dot product. You'll see that it starts with an overview of what will be discussed in that particular section. Be sure you read the overview for important information. The section learning objectives tell you exactly what you're expected to learn in that section and they're mapped to the module learning objectives, which are mapped to the course learning objectives. 
Down here, you have the option to open the lecture notes in either PDF form or in Word form. Word form works better with screen readers, but it is recommended that you download the file and open it on your computer. Some students like to use the Word version because they want to use the draw feature in Word in order to take notes directly in the file. This is also an option for the PDF version. Let's take a look at what the PDF version looks like. The lecture notes are gonna go through and cover all of the topics that are in the course. You'll see that the introduction is similar to what you will find in the overview. You can click on this symbol up at the top, which will either show you the page view, or you can click on the outline to go to a particular example. When you find examples, you'll see that there is space left for you to write out the solutions to the examples. The examples are all worked within the section video. The link to the section video is here. This is on the Calculus 3 playlist, which you will find here. Each particular section's video is linked in this part, and the Calculus playlist for that course is listed here, as well as here in its full URL. If you are still unsure, you may want to read through the worked out examples in the e-textbook. You can click on that by clicking on this link right here, and it will open in another tab. When you look at this, you will be able to look at all of the different examples that they have worked out in the textbook. You can click on show or hide to expand the explanations. When you reach the end of a particular section, you will find the homework problems for that particular section, if I can ever get down there. Notice that the, some of the odd ones are highlighted in blue and underlined. When you click on this, it will open up the solution to that particular problem. When you're looking at it, you will be able to find that solution in the list over here. It also has solutions to the checkpoints, which are often used as examples in the video. These are found at the beginning. Once you have completed looking at the textbook, you may want to watch some additional videos that are available on YouTube that cover particular topics that you see listed here. There will also be a section titled Explore. Within the Explore section, you will find interactive applets that let you explore more about the concepts you're learning. Most of the ones for Calculus 3 are from mathinsight.org. Most of the ones for Calculus 1 and 2 are from GeoGebra. Let's take a look at one of the examples from the dot product. When it opens, in this case, you get a brief definition of what the dot product is with different examples worked out. You may have an interactive applet that lets you explore the concept by changing different aspects of the applet. Once you have explored the concept and you feel confident you understand, you're ready to begin the homework. You can click on homework and it will open directly into D2L. It is powered by MyOpenMath, but you do not need to have a MyOpenMath account to work it. The homework will open into D2L and you can look at the different problems that can be solved. This is the instructor view, which has the answers as well, but you will not have answers available. When you click into the box, it will open up a menu, which you can use to select various templates. You are able to work homework problems repeatedly until you get them correct up to the deadline. On quizzes, you generally have two tries on each problem before you go to the next.
After you have practiced the homework, you'll open up a discussion where you will post a discussion seven times throughout the semester. For a full semester course, that's roughly every other week. If it's time to take a quiz, you will click on the link for the quiz and you will begin the quiz, which will also open directly in D2L. There are also Python projects to be completed, which you can find on a page within the module where it begins. Within the particular page, it will give links to the different files that you need in order to review how to use CoCalc and also how to program with Python. In order to find the code file, you can look here in three different places. If you click on one of these links, it will open up a page where you're able to edit your own copy directly from CoCalc. It is also stored in D2L, but some students with tablets have difficulty in downloading the file directly from D2L. Thus, it is also available through Google Drive. Once you have completed it, you will submit your project in the assignments folder. There is always an example output file, which shows you what the code should look like after you've run the examples. When it is time to begin reviewing for an exam, the review section will appear on the section page, as well as a link to that unit's review. There is always a show work quiz at the end of each module before you take the exam, to be sure that you are prepared and ready for the exam. The link for the exam can also be found on the last section page of a particular module. Let's now return to module zero start here. Other pages in the start here module zero section are the course rubrics, which explains how your discussions will be graded and how your Python projects will be graded. There is also a page that governs the course schedule. The course schedule is available by module and by day at the top, but it is also available in a calendar form towards the end. Your instructor will probably make available a printable version of the calendar so that you can print it out and have it handy so you can stay on track. There are some forms to complete and proctoring information to discuss with your instructor during the first week of class. You will want to complete the required practice submitting a PDF file, which you can find by clicking on the link available on the forms to complete page. There is also a student information form so that your professor can get to know you a bit better and anticipate any needs you might have. Finally, there's a proctor request form, which you will find here, which will help to inform your instructor how you will be taking your proctored exams. There are some frequently asked questions about proctoring, which are answered down below. There is also a page on technical support, which gives the listing for how to get help from the state system and also how to get help from My Open Math. After that, you will proceed into the review material, which is prerequisite and completely optional. Following that, you will begin in a module. Every module opens with a module introduction, which has a brief introduction into that particular module covers all the sections that will be covered on the exam on that module, and also maps the module learning objectives to the course learning outcomes. Once you finish a module, it will take you automatically to the next module in the list. If your professor is going to have office hours via Zoom, you will find those links here. When you need help in math, you can find some tutoring options for online courses through Colorado Online here, as well as links to all of the home colleges so that you can find the tutoring options available at your home college by clicking on one of the links that you see here.
There are also additional websites that are available that will help you with different aspects of the course. And links to these are provided. There is also the page which covers cell phone photos to PDF files and scanning in documents. This page has a document which shows you exactly how to produce a PDF file from an image file and how to upload it. It covers instructions for both Microsoft Word and Adobe Reader or Adobe Acrobat. There are images available to show the steps for all of these different options. There is also a section that will allow you to print out graph paper. Graph paper is available in all courses with rectangular graphs, in Calculus 2 and 3 with polar graphs, and in Calculus 3 also with isometric graphs. There is also a folder of how to study and test documents, which cover things like communicating with your professor, setting goals, having a flexible or growth mindset, forming study groups, study skills, how to handle that pesky test anxiety, how to manage your time and be sure you have time to complete the course, and also a repetition of how to write up homework that was in the grading and assessment page. All documents are available in both PDF form and Word form. Word form is more accessible to students who use screen readers. You shouldn't have any real need to go into the course document repository, but if you do, this is where you will find the syllabi, the calendar, and the forms, as well as the individual lecture notes. They're organized by chapter, and again, they are included in both PDF and accessible Word form. This is also where you will find the Python files, though you will find links to them on the pages within the modules. There are a few handouts for each different calculus course that you may want to explore. Please do not use the instructor use only folder as this may mess up the data through my open math. This is essentially how to navigate your course in a brief video. I hope that you will enjoy it and learn a lot of really cool calculus.